in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed listen to me nobody will build a destiny just by saying because i have seen the word of god and just jumped around it it won't work that way i want to show you tonight how to engage the word i started last week i want to show you the operation how does this thing work the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise let me tell you something you see i love everybody but i don't listen to everybody I love everybody I am open to learn but I have cultured my understanding because there are certain predictable results I want to get I don't want to waste my time at random being in confidence today and then being confused over what I believed yesterday I want to coordinate my understanding to make sure that I attain something very tangible I've always shared it is like taking lectures everywhere Will you be awarded a degree at the end of it? Today you go to medicine, next tomorrow you just hop to faculty of arts, and then next tomorrow you just go to PG block and just stand by the door and attend anything. You are writing. After many years, you have been engaging randomly. It is your constructive uh, engaging of knowledge that coordinates your understanding along the path of a field. This is how it is. Many of us are not in ignorance of what we want, but we lack the requisite knowledge and we have not taken advantage of the grace that has been supplied or we have not understood the operation that will lead to that outcome. This brief teaching tonight is going to be a mighty deliverance for many people. You will see what we have been doing and why it looks like regardless of our prayers nothing is working and it will be a deliverance because if god does not come now you will continue till 2021 and it will not work because brothers and sisters god is moved with your tears but he acts based on his word he is touched by your tears he's called compassion but only the word of god compels him to action The darkness, the hovering round of the spirit did not bring light. Wonderful, sympathetic to that environment. But until the word of God came, nothing changed. Hallelujah. Engaging the word of God. <clears throat> Scripture says that the entrance of thy word giveth light. Listen. The entrance of thy word giveth light and then it gives understanding to the simple. The entrance, not the reading, not the recitation, not the quoting, not the watching. The entrance, there is an activity of the word. When it enters into your spirit, truly, the Bible says it can give light. And then dependent on your state, it can graduate from light to understanding. Are we together now? That's what the Bible says would happen to us. And if we understand how the word of God works, then it will be from one glory of fearful results to another. The laws of God. Listen to me. The laws of God are a representation of his love and his justice. You have to understand this. Don't let the laws of God irritate you. They are put there to guarantee predictability to your victory.
Thank you. James chapter 1. We're reading from verse 22 to 25. James chapter 1. Apostle James is teaching us now. James chapter 1. But be ye doers of the word. Everyone say doers of the word. And not hearers only. Then he says if you are a hearer only, what are you doing to yourself? Deceiving yourselves. To 25. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetted what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. What is it called? The law that liberates men. The law of liberty. That when you access it, it can set you free from any bondage. And continueth therein he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work what will that man have this man whoever he is shall be blessed in his deed if something is happening to my results i must go back is that not how mechanics fix a car when you kick a car it should start one kick and everything should move but when you kick a car and engage the gears and they are not working, the mechanic steps back and says, okay, let's array a number of problems that might be wrong. Maybe the gear system, maybe the ignition, maybe the battery, and he begins to check. And then later, ah, I see where the problem is. And then he fixes it. If he gets it right, the car responds immediately. If he gets it wrong, that car can be grounded forever. The problem is not the car. It was designed to work. There are times you need to change mechanic. You just say, thank you, sir. You have been struggling around this car for a very long time. I appreciate your effort. And then you go to someone who can help you understand this. While he's fixing it, you're just watching him and hoping he's right. The most important thing is the result. It's the mechanic you are waiting for. Sometimes he will tell you, go and outsource certain things and bring we will add it to this car and then it will work that's how your destiny is that's how your prosperity is that's how the increase of the anointing in your life is there are people who have been anointed all that they have learned is how the anointing comes they have never learned how it grows so they are at one level forever they are anointed but you never see growth everything in their life is at the same level for a very long time Is God speaking to us? Our family members. Every one of us. We take the Bible and quote it. And quote it and jump around. And mock ourselves before situations and circumstances. And hope we are right. Brothers and sisters. Let's sit down and examine this thing. Our, our results are showing that something is wrong. I don't know about you. But I'm a very honest person at least to myself. When a thing is not working, I don't lie that it's working. I go back to the drawing board. There's got to be a way. I cry for the spirit of revelation. There's got to be a way. Lord, there is a way out. There is a way out. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation. You were, you were authorized by God to guide me. There is the truth somewhere. And I begin to search like an archaeology. Boom, the light comes. When light comes, then darkness goes and goes forever. Pray in one minute, Lord, show me what I'm not doing right. Show me what I'm not doing right. I take responsibility. I would have been healed by now. There is something I'm not getting. I'm missing a step for sure. What is closing the doors of favor over my life? Why does this sickness leave and come back? Why, why, why do people help me today and hate me tomorrow? Why does the church rise today and go down tomorrow? There is something I do not know. 
why do i see the power of god move mightily in a meeting today and then tomorrow it's as if i was not the one who god used yesterday why do i preach powerfully today and then tomorrow i turn around and it's as if i'm barren of utterance what am i missing oh god show me these systems why did i enjoy strange favor in august and right now december is as though my heavens have closed what is what am i missing because the word of god lives and abides forever that means the result should be steady and predictable lord i'll not be ashamed when you reveal to me no no i humble myself i mean business with my destiny open my eyes to where i'm making the mistake open my eyes to the place where i'm missing it that's the place where satan has capitalized on my result let god be true and every man a liar let god be true and joshua selman a liar god cannot lie something about my not understanding his ways is responsible for where i am god cannot lie god cannot lie god does not lie there is something we do not understand that is authorizing darkness hallelujah look up in the bible the first demonstrators of the fact that a man can do motions but not as authorized and not receive results is cain and abel adam taught them the way to sacrifice is that true and for abel he was able to sacrifice according to pattern and the bible said that his sacrifice rose to heaven and for cain he just brought anything and thought it was just by the action and his sacrifice was rejected it was not about cain it was not about abel cain was a rebel you would see it in the later parts of his life he was not complying to the pattern that was given and abel innocently innocently and his sacrifice was received it's not about the tithe you have been carrying an envelope and standing with it and dropping an envelope that you dropped an envelope of 10 percent of your money does not mean your heavens were opened the understanding that sponsored what you have done is what gives life to the activity the activity you do is empowered by the life that comes through understanding it is not motions people package seats and drop they drop money they do all kinds of things they dance they jump around they confess they fast and pray and do everything there is no understanding listen in my opinion the worst man on earth is a madman not a dead man a madman followed by a blind man these are the two most dangerous states any human on earth can be when you're a madman you there is no possibility for your understanding to be fruitful number two when you are blind you are limited in many ways are we together that's why when jesus saw madmen read your bible every madman jesus saw he insisted until that person was healed why does the word of god seem to be important in our lives let me give you two reasons and then we may share a few things if god grants us grace why does the word of god seem important in our lives regardless of our supposed engaging it number one <laughs> number one we do not engage the word 
with understanding the first reason why the word of god seems important is because we are engaging it based on our opinions or the opinion of a preacher proposed to us but not based on understanding in all thy getting get understanding in all your sowing sow with understanding in all your praying pray with understanding in all your serving serve with understanding in all your dancing dance with understanding the bible says whatever it is that you get have an understanding of what you are doing that's the first reason why the word of god seems important the second reason is that the word of god is not engaged at all the word of god may be believed it may even be received but it's not engaged the word of god is not engaged at all we leave the responsibility of engaging the word to god and let me tell you where this mistake came from it is in not knowing that the grace of god like wisdom and like love are multifaceted everybody say multifaceted there are many attributes in the realm of the spirit that are multifaceted the bible talks about the height the depth of love like wisdom too the depth the height grace has dimensions are we together one dimension of grace is unmerited access particularly the grace that saves the grace that saves was so designed because there is nothing in ourselves and by our power we are able to do so the system of receiving the grace that saves is to believe the report and confess the lordship of jesus the moment you do that the bible says you are saved for with the heart this is how this operation works for with the heart man believes unto righteousness romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation this is soteria yes but this was in the context of salvation now listen carefully that's how that grace works now there is a dimension of grace that empowers you to do you do but the strength for doing is supplied by the spirit are we together now the bible says in ephesians chapter 3 i believe and verse 20 it says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think above that who are those who are doing the asking and the thinking you i'm doing the thinking i'm doing the asking but i am doing it according to an ability that is working in me in me jesus sent the 72 go you go and do the teaching but there is a grace that follows you these signs will follow you you move and then it follows you now the challenge is when we take the concept of the operation of saving grace and apply it to every area of our life and say for my finance all I do is to believe and speak and it settles it no sir it doesn't settle it read your Bible Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe do and observe do and observe all that is written how many all all that is written all that if you do not just hear not just speak do according to all that the Lord commands not according to the way you want then it lists a number of promises that the Lord will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2, it says, and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Then it begins to list them. There is a doing. 
listen when your doing is by human strength that's what we call works when your doing is by divine strength it's called partnership in any case there is a doing it is when your doing is based on the strength of the flesh that's what is called works of the law when your doing is based on the supply of the spirit and in obedience to God's command is called partnership is what great men of God will call covenant the obedience that binds you and commits you to God please take out time to understand how this thing works once and for all so here's how it works come this is a promise by God Emeka I am going to make you exceedingly fruitful I am going to make you such an anointed man see from scripture this is my destiny for you this is God speaking now it is left for Emeka to understand what is going to be my approach he can say wow what a great destiny Lord are you not powerful who am I weak human being like me when we arrive just let me know and he goes back that's exactly the kind of believer Satan wants because he comes and says look look if God is mighty why does he need to be assisted you see how Satan plays with our minds he said God he does not need your assistance and he indoctrinates us into irresponsibility and we step back and say Lord I just confess and leave everything and God says no no right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but the word had to come and become flesh and did things on earth in order for salvation to come to fruition why didn't he sit down and speak and say after all the father had declared he came died was resurrected by the spirit of holiness the bible declares and today is seated at the right hand of the father a physical coronation was done to him although he was the word the lord said to my lord sit down this is where we have missed it either we are not engaging according to knowledge the Bible talks about having a lot of zeal but that their zeal is not according to knowledge or we are not engaging at all many of us are allowing God father this is how we pray look up father I pray help my life you see that kind of thing it looks like a very honest prayer just because you are crying father help my life look at my family Lord are you not looking at my father what is I'm reading that you are a merciful God what is all this nonsense oh God then you apologize and get back again okay Lord I'm, I'm serious what I'm trying to say is will you not step into my family and God says look there is an ordinance I bound myself by my own word are we together now and then our parents just sit down and say oh God have mercy on our finances lord there are demons disturbing us in this house which man of god will come and help us now eh you see that and we keep saying all these things and then we discuss and hope it will happen or a preacher says oh god increase my ministry i've been standing no members no workers people come and receive miracles and go i am a very sound man of god but there's no increase those groups of people will never receive any testimony I guarantee you if you are one of them I show you the way out this night because it will never change nothing changes until it is engaged if this gentleman is not a human being he stands here and remains here that's what Sir Isaac Newton taught us in mechanics is that true for this gentleman to move I must apply a force that is greater than where he's standing and it moves him is that true this is how your destiny stands and remains this is how your finances will stand and remain this is how witches and wizards will keep oppressing you that you got up in the night and just mumbled tongues for five minutes ah in jesus name i beg just go and then you just lazily put one coin on your message and go back to sleep and then after that you just get up and it doesn't bother you you couldn't sleep in the night but once it's morning we forget the things that are behind those kinds of people will never rise 
so how does the word how does god himself prescribe that we operate the word let me show you number one the first thing a believer has to do is not to search scripture the first thing is to believe that god is alive and he's mighty all this searching of the bible is useless until there is a conviction in your heart he that cometh unto god hebrews 11 and verse 6 he must believe that he exists when you are still doubting whether there is a god no matter what you search in the bible is subjective you will doubt one day paul said i know whom i have believed it's not the believing i know the person i believe and i am persuaded in his ability i am persuaded before you start searching scripture for your health for your finance for your life do you believe in the reality of god now this is where the ministry of the holy spirit comes because it is the spirit of god that makes jesus real to believers miracles do not make jesus real listen to me the disciples saw many people rise from the dead have you seen congregations that see all kinds of miracles yet one of the greatest levels of unbelief can be resident within those believers peter went on evangelism he was part of those who returned but when he stood he doubted the disciples ran away So the first thing is an encounter, an encounter with God. The foundation for operating the word properly is a settled conviction about the fact that God is alive. And number two, that he is mighty and able. You have to settle that. Otherwise, your journey to exploring the word of God is a waste. Many religions teach all kinds of things about Jesus Christ and about God. And even in the Christian faith, there are all kinds of disturbing variations and understandings about God. There are people who believe that God is not really God. He's just one of the many deities. So they add him, it's an all-inclusive thought about God. That God, the name God is like a man with so many dimensions. And Jesus is just one dimension of him and there are other dimensions. If that's what you believe, the word will not profit you. You see that? Yes. Number two, when your conviction is settled, now listen carefully. Number two is that there must be a searching. The Bible says for everyone that seeketh find it, there must be a searching. You don't sit passively and quote any scripture for anything. All keys don't open any door. There are specific keys for specific doors. Are we together now? Yes. You cannot have a financial concern and you are applying a scripture of marriage except if the Holy Ghost opened your eyes to see a mystery there. But you just stand oh and he was alone and you just quote it and say lord I, I i at least it's the bible bible is bible no sir no sir all this humanist point of view that keep punishing us you have to find the accurate word the key to your kitchen does not open your bedroom the key to your bedroom does not open your car the key to your car does not open the safe of a bank they all require keys but you must be able to piece together the scriptures that address the issues of concern and where you do not know those scriptures follow those who have conquered in that area they have conquered by the word you see how it is so this lady is walking for instance in tremendous dimensions of the anointing and i'm trusting god now i believe god wants to anoint me i'm tired of my church struggling sick people not being healed and i search around i'm in ignorance and i just find out okay the holy ghost shall come upon you lord i receive but nothing is working it means i have to explore it is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to help you 
and open up that mystery all you do is just read the Holy Ghost shall come upon you Lord I believe now the Holy Ghost is upon me and you get up you are seeing that nothing is working that's to tell you there is more than that thing you read every time the obvious does not produce result go prophetic immediately it means there is there is a deeper understanding every time the obvious doesn't produce the result you desire there must be a prophetic interpretation so I access her materials and I sit with the Holy Spirit and then I trust him to begin to open me up now listen 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 when you begin to study the Bible and meditate upon it you need time and you need concentration two things that we lack in this our distracted generation time and concentration you can't be cooking and trying to access revelation you quickly the food is hot on fire and you are wondering until it starts smelling as if you are burning and in the middle of something that is living heaven just about to get to you you run and then while you are trying to off the gas you return back you won't continue where you left you will start afresh again it's like worship when you finish worshiping and they take light you hope that they bring it fast if you don't bring that light after 30 minutes don't think they just bring it and you continue no somebody who was kneeling before just gets up and starts punching his phone time and concentration let me tell you this many believers are distracted it's a strategy of satan you are studying your bible and playing computer game satan yes sir satan i didn't say satan made the game satan created that system to distract you studying your bible and making a long call then what did you say i'm still on it no no sir no sir study great men how does god reveal these things to them when there was a need for revelation daniel said oh king don't worry just give us time daniel was not loitering around in the silence then the secret was revealed then the secret was revealed there are some of us who believe that because you are always around people it's a sign that you are a famous person let me advise you you may not be very great if your entire life is corporate you must understand the power of a private life are we together it's good to have a corporate fellowship it's good to be with your husband your wife your children but there are times listen certain realities in the spirit cannot come until you are alone even demons walk like that there are certain levels of oppression that will never happen till you are alone there are certain levels of encounters that never happen until you are alone i want you to learn this these things i'm teaching you are, are the ways god has opened me up to revelation you need conviction then you need to search out let me take one area that is very obvious for us let's talk about maybe the issue of wealth and prosperity for instance things are not working in your life things are not working in your family let me tell you what many of us say oh god i've been crying about this employment issue it won't you wipe my tears and give me a job be very honest is it a job that is going to solve your problem i'm not saying a job is bad but you need an understanding of the economic system of the kingdom not a job you don't make money off job you don't make money off business you make money off understanding are we together now yes and so the person just says well lord i thank you and then you believe that things will change or your health you are trusting god the devil is afflicting your body afflicting your body and you are happy here and there you just quote some scriptures in jesus name by his stripes i am healed and then that settles it you won't get healed that way i want you to study the bible i i got a very powerful revelation from bishop david Oedico that I, I mean it did something to my life in a way that i cannot begin to explain do you know that satan is very particular about two things sickness and poverty they are his master keys in keeping believers oppressed sickness and what poverty he doesn't mind you being brilliant that's all right if he struggles to hold you and you refuse he will let you be 
but your body and your finances he fought the body of moses he fought the well-being of israel in egypt listen to me these are the two areas that when you want to break free it's not just quoting scripture there will be warfare are you, are you, are you hear what i'm saying warfare that you want to walk in divine health whereas your entire lineage has a track record of sickness look at all the people who were healed in the bible they were not casual thou son of david have mercy was passing the woman with the issue of blood eh, madam please don't embarrass us you are, you, are, you are joking shouted until jesus responded the blind guy at the pool of Siloam. what of the one that they tore a roof to bring him inside said we can negotiate with the owner of this house the same money that fixes the roof we spend 10 times it in the hospital when it comes to your health it's going to be more than recitation trust me it will be warfare because this body is what authorizes you to function on earth satan will fight it with cancer he will fight it with anything he can fight look at young people now having um what they call this thing blood pressure blood pressure last born and he has blood pressure everybody is taking care of him yet he still has high blood pressure are we together yes that's to tell you blood pressure is not a product of fatigue it's a demon it's a demon don't let anybody tell you it's because of stress doctors well done i love all of you but believe me just hear what i'm telling you it will not be just because of stress it's a spirit a wicked spirit from hell hell had enlarged itself releasing all kinds of strange demons I pray for people and I look at certain sicknesses I know that this has to be a demon praise the Lord they say you are sick but you find out that is when you are praying all kinds of objects you can't see it all, but you are feeling it move from your leg to your stomach to your chest then it stops there and very soon they say ah you have a breast a, 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 a lump on your breast that devil is a liar that is a spirit it's not just some kind of i say you ate too much starch no sir no sir before we knew anything about nutrition people were dying in the bible every time they died and food killed them they said there was death in the pot they didn't say there was sickness it's the spirit of death do you know there are certain manifestations of poverty that appears as sickness you never get healed till your money finishes then by yourself you get healed you buy the highest level of panadol it won't go are we together you pray and fast it won't go the moment you backslide that headache just goes like that is that a sickness no sir is God speaking to us and then finance the demon of finance is even the worst one because I've seen that one myself let me tell you why it is bad it is Satan's deception in the body to believe that trusting to access the blessings of God is antagonistic to your spirituality and will alter your passion for God sir Poverty will keep you far from God than a blessed life. Take it from me. When you stand and see an empty plate before you, you will be shocked to see that as holy as you are, you are thinking steal it. Are we together? You know, we don't tell ourselves the truth in church. We lie to ourselves. Is that true? Is that not what is making parents to push children you have to go and marry so 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 this guy is not born again no problem he has what can wipe our tears will you think like that if God has helped you please answer me no. what of those who still in the house of God do you think they were born thieves no the pressure that poverty brings how many churches have people stealing from offering as the accounting the finance department they write a check a blank check 
they quickly put their names there and pocket it poverty the ladies that sleep with big men do they sleep with poor men please answer me how much does the poor man have is he not a big man somewhere that promises them that I will change your life and you are there and your ends have not met they, they, you, you don't know where dinner will come from yet we keep laughing and think it's not an issue there are people now some of you students school is about to resume and the truth is they don't know where the school fees will come from so when you say let's pray the person starts praying and later you find out that you've kept quiet by yourself it's a spirit how many men of god stopped loving god and stopped being serious you can't sit down in a house where you have not paid the rent and you are fasting any knock on the door will distract you no matter what god is saying these are strategies of the enemy please i if all you think about poverty is just nice shoe nice car you are carnal this thing is warfare this is the destiny of the saints you are talking about bless you darling are we together how many graduates now as soon as they graduate they just say lord i want to spend one year with you and they just say daddy i just decided to take one year for a retreat and your father will say come home as if he wants to give you money when you sit down you say what did you say are you are you an idiot it was with my pension i was running your your school you are staying one year to see god that means i'm not a christian you better go and look for work your uncle was talking the other day and the lord is telling you consecrate one year to know me for the destiny i'm showing you but pressure is coming from anywhere and you dare not say no you find yourself in a profitless job and you are crying every day you say i want to leave society says you better don't leave hunger will kill you Hi. may god raise a generation of people that will access these things you know years ago i listened to our father in the lord bishop oyedeko and as he said these things passionately people criticized him they still do and all those poor and broke people are the ones today that are making their congregations poor and angry i don't want to sit down serving god thinking about money imagine if i was thinking about my daily bread i now prophesy to you and say sam see me after service God just shows me that a wealthy newcomer has come. I say, Madam, specially see me, you see me after service. There's something God said I should tell you. I can't say it in public. Hunger, whose God is their belly? It's a very serious issue. I know we are laughing. I'm very serious about it. Let me tell you prosperity has contributed to my concentration and the anointing upon my life yes sir yes sir i can sit down and spend time worshiping bless your people oh god not come and say you are joining the queue where's the envelope you are holding you, you can imagine that kind of thing so it's not every man of god you see doing these things that are bad they have not understood how to engage this is what i'm trying to bail you from are we together do you know how to command results or are you aware that results can be commanded do you know how to command it or are you aware brothers and sisters if you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death do you know how to come out or do you hope you will come out There are people playing gimmicks about the anointing with shock i watch the things that people do that they believe brings the anointing and they will not listen you see one of the things i've learned with satan is that you see pride and fear are power twins that satan brings to your life to disturb you on one side you are afraid but on another side there is tremendous arrogance so they will not learn when i find somebody who has an understanding in an area i don't i will not argue no matter what i don't understand about what he's saying i give his revelation a chance there are very broke people 
who will sit down and analyze every pastor listen to a message and say this is not correct look at the person talking are we together there are many people who have never prophesied they have never seen anything and they will tell you hear God alone don't listen to a man of God the person who is talking to you is talking and he wants you to listen to him yet he's telling you that you should not listen to a man of God nobody needs to prophesy to your life forget about just to do this and and for this cause many are weak there are many people just one prophetic word is what your destiny is waiting for but they can stay for 10 years they've done everything well but one thing is needful and they've missed it are we together don't criticize what you don't understand let your heart be open to say lord speak to me It is the doers of the word that commit God, not the hearers, not the readers, not the watchers, not the listeners, the practitioners of the word. This ministry by the grace of God Almighty is where it is by the grace of God, not because of the intelligence of a man. Joshua Selman is too small to produce this result. Rabbi, Nicodemus said we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do this this result is not in the realm of men no man can do this except God be with him let's review two areas for tonight is that all right let's review two areas of our lives two areas of our lives let me pick one our spiritual lives and then our finances let's pick these two areas how do we rise by the revelation of the word? Let's start with our spiritual life. Some of you think I'll start with money. Listen first. Your spiritual life. Hallelujah. Spiritual life. <laughs> if I ask you, how do we grow spiritually? What are you going to tell me? I read my Bible. And I pray every day. Question. Have you not been doing it? Have you been growing? <laughs> are we together? There are many liars in church. We just open the Bible in the morning and read anywhere. We are just come. Is the purpose of reading the Bible for many believers is to cure themselves from the guilt of not feeling spiritual. They just open any scripture. And Abraham did this. Then they open another one. The Lord will perfect all that concerns you. Then they pray, Lord, I thank you. Today is blessed. I speak to this day. And then they come out and their lives are messed up. And after many years, they don't grow. Brothers and sisters, that's not how we grow in the kingdom. You never grow just by looking at a Bible and mumbling words. Take it from me. No, you don't grow that way. Not in the anointing, not in the knowledge of God. I want to show you how to grow because people can grow let me tell you the first key to growth write it down Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 is called the law of encounter this is the first mystery that is responsible for growth in the kingdom Jeremiah chapter 29 please give it to us and verse 13 13 13 13 Jeremiah 29. Read it with me. One to read. Uh huh. Uh huh. The last three words, please. One to read. One more time. One more time. You see these three words? That is the separator of casual Christians and people who will find God. It says, and ye will seek me. Many are doing it. But you will only find me when you search for me with everything. Everything. Brothers and sisters, your motive and your hunger for God vetoes your fasting. It vetoes your prayer. It vetoes your study of Bible and your reading of books. There are many of those who wrote the Bible. They walk in Zondavan. 
they work in white taker house the publishing companies but they are not born again printing the bible and walking around it does not bring growth there is a depth of hunger read your bible everyone who found god in the bible searched for him with everything not a casual pastoral search not a woman of god mama search uh -uh. not a businessman theoretical search not an academician search ye shall seek me hear what david said a man who was full of encounters as the deer pants after the water brooks reading the bible does not mean you pant after god it may just mean you are not yet employed so you are whiling away time until your letter arrives and you get busy brothers and sisters there is one thing i know if you must remain in the faith you need an encounter with god an encounter that is higher than business an encounter that is higher than money that is the only thing that has capacity to keep you if you don't have an encounter i promise you the busyness of ministry will make you go still are we together encounters there are pastors who are good readers of the bible excellent revelators of the word but there's no encounter and you find out they rise the moment ministry starts moving you see an an unbelievable deviation of convictions you didn't an encounter an encounter is the place of intimacy with god that is the place of pruning that is the place of dealing that is a place where your all is before him an encounter is not a place where men of God meet God. An encounter is where those who are desperate for him, they say, oh God, as a matter of life and death, that is the place where he washes you. That is the place where he builds you. You don't have an encounter, you will never grow spiritually. We can flatter ourselves. Listen, the appearance of the gifts of the spirit in your life is not necessarily proof of growth. There is a big deception sweeping the body of Christ. And thank God I walk in this thing so that you don't think that maybe I'm just talking. Listen, I can walk whether in the healing or the prophetic grace. The anointing on that office is not a reflection of my spiritual growth. It is the grace and empowerment that comes by reason of being called into that office. If that anointing comes on a handkerchief, it will produce the same result. Handkerchiefs don't have spiritual lives. Listen, that's why you can lay hands on someone during a service and he can pray for sick people and they will be healed. After 10 days, find out whether he will still do it again. It's gone. Because you have to dig your well and cultivate a healthy spiritual life impartation does not cover for encounters you can receive an impartation of grace and the moment you enter a meeting you see people jumping up and down or you and an, an, an impartation of the spirit of revelation and you begin to teach the bible do you know there are people who finish teaching the bible and afterwards when they enter the office they now start discussing and you're like this is is this thing? is it that these people don't believe what they say i've seen music artists that when you see them, service is going on, they are at the back of the church, gisting, taking sugar cane, eating biscuit. They now say, it's time for Elijah to come and minister. And then just cleans his mouth and comes. And after five minutes, you see people rolling on the floor. And you finish, you say, my God, Elijah, no, sir. No, sir. God does not judge you based on the gift in your office. It's based on how much you pursued him seekers of his presence you can study the bible out of competition to make sure that you are the first to bring certain dimensions you can study the bible out of just to make sure you have sermons i know pastors and that's wonderful i teach it too there are pastors that have a sermon for every topic all they keep doing when they are invited is to just flip what are we talking about now? Uh, 
the earth's head will flow together. Ah, I remember 2004, I preached a message like that. Just dust it, add A and B. Are we blessed? The starting point of your spiritual life is to trust God for a hunger that can last your lifetime. Hmm. I will give up ministry a thousand times. Some of you don't like what I'm saying because I said I'll talk about money too. You better listen to what I'm telling you because this is, this is what will make money not kill you. I want you to ask the Lord, he will tell you, there is nothing in this life nothing in this life that i cannot give god ask him there is nothing that is the measure of your love for god the measure of your love for god is not sung when you say you love this lady she says sir i've not eaten i say sorry they just called me at the police station you are a liar and a foolish gentleman because if it is true love it will cost you are we together the cost dimension i'm showing you how these things work spiritually what you see god do in my life today i submit to you is not just entirely a product of my prayer and fasting it's because god knows that anything he gives me is his own ah my own my anointing my ministry when did that happen i'm showing you where we are missing it although we are still studying the bible how many pastors move around oh my member my choir my this and god says all right so you pay the bills you 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 decorate everything you bring members by yourself how many churches put pressure on their people go and bring five souls otherwise you pastor will look at you and say i saw three please 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 john wesley said set yourself on fire and the world will come and watch you burn where the carcasses are brothers and sisters that's where the eagle will come there are people who have traveled from several cities and several places today because there is a fire the key is not to go and call them the key is to keep burning the key is not to go and call them the key is to keep burning my heart belongs to you my life belongs to you when i go to pray he is lord of my prayer i don't just go ba -da 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 -da, as if i'm a fool as if you are you are, you are chanting a, a charm i approach god like one who is totally dependent on him he is the lord of my prayer life many of us think that the power is in the dissipation of energy so when we do it and someone is watching you you are hoping they are bearing it on record that you are a prayer warrior no sir this is not how spiritual things work above the mercy seat below the cherubims there i will meet with you there is a meeting place and i i am desperate for you Hey, help that lady. And now I'm lost without you. This is how it works in the kingdom. And now. Listen, man of God, let me tell you why the anointing has been far from you. Because every time you think power, you think conference. You think of a plane flying you around. Every time you think God, you think honorarium. Every time you think God, you think man of God. You imagine yourself entering a meeting and everybody saying, this is apostle. And God says, you know way. You fast dry 100 days and God says, in spite of it, and ye shall seek me and only find me 
and any other dimension in me when you seek me with your heart you see the way pastors hold ministry they, are, they, they hold ministry as if if anybody ever preaches no why is not them please let them not take my church and they struggle and kill themselves koinonia belongs to him he's a privilege to lead this ministry you see that gone are the days when they preach encounters now everybody just preaches open the bible read and somebody just quotes a scripture oh uh, yeah the deep things of god and we bounce around like a debate and while we are doing it heaven is watching that's why there is no life in what we do listen let's return to the place of encounters ask anyone those of us who started in this ministry it was people and god alone at the back of a fence at the this is encounter encounter is not sitting down and no it is encounter that makes you to listen to a 30 minutes tape and finish it in three days because you will be offing it every moment there were people who would lock gone at the days when people lock themselves from morning till night now when people lock themselves to pray it is oh god give me a wife oh god give me a husband i'm not saying these things are wrong oh god give me this oh god i must graduate oh god i must get a job service what is all this nonsense and ye shall seek me please god is not a joker let me tell you if all of you does not seek him forget about it there are ladies seeking god only to prepare themselves for ministry no you won't find god that way if at any point you find yourself using god just know that you and the anointing you and glory you are far please hear what i'm telling you i i never started hold on i never started my walk with god knowing i will even be a preacher one one gentleman came here i think some months ago with documents from his ministry well articulated and he said he has been listening he wants to start a walk and he just came to take my blessings i said wonderful i believe god calls people but what have you done have you taken a... i looked at him and at once there is a there is the smell of the secret place it's an aura when you see people who are not those who have visited it is their habitation there is the aura it's not in the huskiness of your voice it's not it's not in the it's not in the preacher friendly tone no sir take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord take all of me take all of me take all of me all of me, use all of me. Hey. I lay my everything, take my everything, I release my everything, take my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. Listen, I wrote this song in a secret place. I'm not a musician. This, this is what happens when you want to grow. Paul and Silas did not have Bible study conferences. But brothers and sisters, these men were seekers of God. There was a prophetess called Anna. The Bible says she stayed in the temple. Stayed in the temple. Since she was 24 for 60 years in the temple listen preachers we are the ones to blame first leave members alone we don't have any encounter ourselves we just come up and dress well that you are preaching right does not mean it's releasing life 
the life is from your secret place not the greek not the hebrew hear me the life is from your secret place he said the word is like a double-edged sword that sword that enters the spirits of men you can't fake it listen honestly speaking we are at a risk of a generation that does not know how to seek God we know how to preach we know how to sing we know how to produce albums we know how to write books but to seek his face where you are fasting not because you want power you are saying Lord show me more of you reveal yourself to me I remember those days in the night those of you in vet vet a uh, faculty of um, what they call it now vet there is a place one of the neglected places I would climb that place and go on top of the zinc in the night I will be there till morning crying and saying Lord I've created a place where no one can distract us reveal yourself I wasn't looking for power reveal yourself right now what happens in the church is just an is just a galore of talent galore of talent i am this i read this i know this i dress like this no sir that's why we have lost the power of god in the body of christ as we sing this song this night brothers and sisters rededicate your life rededication is not for sinners rededication is for those who mean business with god lord i rehand my life again take all of me all of me lord hey, use all of me all of me lord take all of me all of me lord i give all of me all of me lord listen the bible talked about a particular woman because that woman was involved in all kinds of bad past the bible says she came before god with her treasure a representation of our all let me show you how to get the heart of God other people were coming with all their we know that Moses said this and he said this is not what I'm looking for but here comes a woman the Bible says she came with sparking out pure nard, one year's wages a representation of her heart and she knelt down before God the king poured it the Bible says she broke it you can pour small and return small you can give god your heart and take finance you can give god finance and take relationship listen you are not the first to go to school please hear what i'm saying especially for we the young people don't let anyone fool you that working with god does not pay no you want to do business with god there is the price is death not morning devotion the price for encounter is death not eight hours prayers that's too small giving god eight hours of your time will not give him all of you you need to give him everything everything not eight hours you want to see the glory of god in your life and your meetings you can fast dry for 90 days you will not see anything you want to see demons crying out as you minister brothers and sisters is not running around to look for a man of God you a man cannot impart his secret place no sir impartation is only useful when you have set a foundation one of the most deceptive thing happening in the body of Christ now is this craze for impartation people just write the names of five or ten men of God around that they think are anointed and divide seats like a business and hop from one location to the other 
touch me and then they snap i i i got impartation from this it's me please i got impartation for wealth apostle i got impartation for this prophet this give me your own then they gather it in their room and lie to themselves that they are walking in those anointings you are joking you think god is that cheap he said many are called though but few are chosen gone are the days when you will stay as a neighbor with someone like roommate and you hear people groaning and crying before god in the night now people snort their way till morning a pastor a preacher Oh God, anything that will take your presence from my life, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come. Ministry, I will give it up a thousand times. Money, marriage, children, a thousand, a million times. Listen, those of you here who God has called into ministry or you are going into ministry, please, let me give you a loving caution be careful be careful who you follow matters be careful there is a path there is a path that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death you show you are a shepherd by demonstrating your hunger for god People follow your hunger, not your talk. While you are talking, people are watching you and they will find out, is it true that this person hungers after God? Brothers and sisters, I have met preachers in my life who preach what I call a boring message. But the presence of God that left them left me going back to cry and say, from whence cometh this man? Which depth? Where did this, what did this person touch? That's what happened to me when I went to Reinhard Bonke Crusade. I didn't go there to hear revelation. I was already preaching. I was already working in miracles. I went to hear a man who knew God. He talked about the Holy Spirit and he proved it. Let's return back to the secret place. Let's return back to retreats. It's a language we are not used to again learn to off your phone no please learn to source especially now that is december don't enter do you know why we end koinonia we have just one more service and we are done that one month break is not a time for people to go back to what they were doing before just go back and say ah, let me go and see old secondary school friends and loiter around and call it christmas holiday it's a time for some of the workers in the ministry who labor day and night to now go and lock themselves. I can't wait to finish the last service where I know that I have time. No more counseling. No more ministrations. And let me lock myself and cry and roll before the God of my salvation. Not looking for power for next year. Not looking for prophetic word for next year. I don't get the prophetic word by searching. I get the prophetic word by worshiping God and the visions he begins to open to me to the year and he tells me there are people who have come here now and as they are listening to me they are waiting to hear something a revelation oh Greek logos and then they write and carry it quickly and go to their fellowship gentlemen I shipped something from somewhere we will keep mocking ourselves with this thing you don't fake presence when you carry the presence of God, it is palpable. 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 Something happened. I don't know when, when, which of the days now it was. I was alone and someone came to see me. And I wasn't even out here. The person just sat down. I went in. And all of a sudden, I came and saw the person shaking like a leaf. Shaking like a leaf. And I looked. I said, my God. Do you know why? Because you can make your house a habitation of angels all kinds of things happen there all kinds you don't just become spiritual when you fast the key the key please hear me the key to knowing God 
is death not prayer not bible study death a sacrifice of your all until you die the word of god now becomes alive in you until you die the prayer now releases power to you if you have not gone through that process of death the way to the throne is the cross you can't bypass the cross and just put a crown on your head and say i've gotten to the throne i wish i can go through this death for you it is one thing i know that you cannot pass through as a group listen to my message knowing god experientially there are some of us the orchestrations in our lives now are not caused by demons they are the constraints that god must subject you through to cause you to know him yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death until i walked there i never knew that i can fear no evil we live in a generation that binds everything we don't have discernment to know whether it is of god whether it is a furnace that god is purifying us because we are bankrupt spiritually a pastor just sits down and cannot discern what is happening to him anything you see that is not favorable to your senses you cast it and many of us have casted the realms from which power will come there are people who god will say all of you go for work gone are the days where people hear god like this and somebody says you oh, for you two years you are with me no work for you and everybody is lashing on you and criticizing you and saying this your stupid man of god has turned your head upside down and you feel that pain and it is in that pain you know something about god We don't have experiences that make us know God. We are full of theory. There is no scar in us that are testaments of encounter. You don't know God by theory. People are in a rush to go to, for ministry. Some of us, when God called us, it took his grace to push us so because we felt so unqualified in ourselves. We knew it was not the issue of intellect. Is God speaking to you? I remember those days when we traveled for crusade. It was not the boosting of a man of God's ego. People looked forward to encounters. Encounters with the power of God. Never embarrassed by our failures. Right now you see people keep their ego on the line and explain all kinds of things if someone prayed for the sick and he did he was not healed you may not see that person for the next three days not because the person is not because his tongue is ego it's a revelation that you must know more and the person will not lock himself lord there's got to be more but right now pastor lays hands on 90 people 90 people don't get healed and he says well at least we had a successful intellectually sound meeting will i ever be that kind of preacher Do you have time for God? I know you have a Bible. I know you pray, but do you have time for God? Show me the book where you record his voice. Show me the encounters. Show me the personal vigils that you do. Personal vigils, not group vigils where you dominate everything and pray everything. Alone. I remember one of our friends who was spending time with God, I would never forget. I came around Chapel of Redemption there. He was in the rain. It was raining, yet he was on the floor there. That rain started and finished on him. Right now, little discomfort, and we are angry. Nah, no. I can't go to church. My shirt is not properly ironed. They wouldn't think I am a child. That's somebody who doesn't love God. The Holy Spirit is saying, lie down before me. I want to impart something. You turn, ah, this lady that I like, this other one who respects me. My son is here. My daughter is here. Death. That's why we fight. I am Apostle Joshua Selman, not Brother Joshua Selman. Fight. That's a sign that you are alive in yourself. Please, in one minute, if I'm unable to continue, no problem. I'd like you to be honest. I want us to repent this night let's take five minutes i don't know what position you will assume 
Worship just sets the atmosphere for us with the cymbal. Play the strings. I want to hear that sound of the strings. I give you five minutes with your makeup. Please. I'd like you to cry your heart to Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want you to be honest. Take all of me Use all of me Let his glory come upon you. Let an Lord, afresh, 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 afresh. A fresh, a fresh, fresh encounters, fresh encounters. Let a masena na masena na le e da da she da da le da da le da da. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire No one else will do For nothing else can take your place Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes To feel the warmth of your grace Help me find a way would you bring me back to you? Hey, hey, you're all I want. She na 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 ma se na 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 ma se na ni na na ma se na na bo so na 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 ni na na. She ne ma se na ma sa na na ni na na ni na na. Just pray one prayer and say, Father, everything in my life that has risen above you, I bring it under the feet of Jesus now. Pray. Some of us is relationship. Some of us is business. Some of us is career. Some of us is ministry. Don't be ashamed tonight. Some of us is our reputation, beauty, looks, clothes, eloquence, degree, academic certifications, age.
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. It is this lack of secret place that makes us to begin to lose character. Are we together? It is this lack of secret place. You didn't used to be an angry person, but now everything annoys you. Are we together? Yes. Now everything moves you. Women, men, money, power. You didn't used to bother whether they call you pastor, promise or promise. But something happened to you once they don't put pastor, you almost kill. Let me be honest with you. There are many people who are in the motions, but the wine has finished. The wine has finished. The wine has finished. Lord, may, may this ministry never lose relevance. May the wine never finish. Let it never be, O oh God, that a day will come when your power will not move just because men have hindered you. Let it never be, O oh God, that a day will come where Joshua Selman will be full of himself and will never give you right of way. Lord, we rededicate this ministry. I rededicate my life. We rededicate everything to you. We lay our golden crowns, break our pride, Lord, if there is anything we have achieved that is responsible for any trace of pride, take it away. We are rounding up. Take it away. Talk to the Lord. Lord, take away my pride. Mention everything that must leave you. Go ahead and pray. Take away the lust. Take away the pride. Pray. Take away the, the um, what do we call it? Prayerlessness, wordlessness. Oh, 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 financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain